It's the worst feeling in the world. Our stomachs just dropped. Braden Fuxa vanishes in summer 2009. It was just so out of character. His parents panic when they discover a missing handgun and a puzzling trail of clues that he's left in his wake. We didn't know if he had north, south, east, or west. And the search for him turns into a manhunt 700 miles away. At this point, they would probably be looking for a body. It's July 2009. 22-year-old Braden Fuxa is enjoying summer on his own. He's just moved out of his parents' house into an apartment in the college town of Lawrence, Kansas. It was a big deal for me for him to leave home, but he wanted to be independent, which we encourage. <laughs> I mean, you have to let him go at some point. When he's not at work, Braden spends almost all his time doing outdoor activities. Every free moment that we had, we were fishing. He was an outdoor person, 100%. What is that? Cash. Did you catch him? In mid-July 2009, Braden's parents are out of town for a couple days. It was $800. I made a phone call to him and got his voicemail, left him a message just asking him, what's up, were you in trouble, and you had enough money. Starla and Todd go to bed feeling curious, but not overly worried about the transfer. They figure their son will give them an explanation in the morning. Thursday came around, uh, still hadn't heard from him, and it, and it wasn't like Braden. Starla and him were very close. They text back and forth daily. I spoke with Starla and told her that I had seen Brayden at a gas station in town. He didn't seem overly eager to, to talk to me, and because he had been trying to pursue a reconciliation prior to that, that seems a little strange. His parents' concern grows. For some reason, on Sunday morning, we got up. It was just one of those feelings in our master bedroom closet, there's a shelf in there. We kept a nine millimeter in the closet um, for protection. I seen the gun case there on, up on the shelf, and I just grabbed a hold of the gun case itself. It was empty, and my heart just sank. The search for Braden takes on a new urgency. Where did he go? And why does he need a gun? It's the worst feeling in the world. Our stomachs just dropped. Detective Kenton Thompson is put on the case. We've got the handgun gone from his parents' house. So obviously now we've, we've got this concern of what's that about. Braden's parents are confident that their son is an experienced gun user. He's been using a gun since he was big enough to walk. He was hunting by the time he was five. On July 15, 2009, Brayton Fuxa leaves his home in Lawrence, Kansas. Then, four days later, police report that his vehicle has been found in Wyoming. What is in Wyoming? He knew no one in Wyoming, and why is he going that direction? Braden's former longtime girlfriend, Elena, isn't surprised that he didn't confide in anyone. From my perspective, Braden didn't have a lot of close friends. He was a sweet, sweet guy, but he was very quiet. As Detective Thompson struggles to get some insight into Braden's actions, a possible motive emerges. The theft charge resulted from Braden stealing some cash from his employer. We were very shocked. He'd never been in trouble ever. I don't know if he'd ever even had a speeding ticket. After that initial report was made and he was arrested, he was taken directly to uh, the Johnson County Adult Detention Center.
Braden is due in court for a preliminary hearing on July 16th. When his case is called, Braden's car is already two states away in Wyoming. I believe his perception of it was that it was going to be much more serious for him than it probably would have been. If he truly understood the likely outcome, perhaps he would not have been so distraught about the arrest. As the details of Braden's case emerge, the investigation focuses on the largest piece of evidence, Braden's car. Braden's parents make the long drive to pick it up themselves. This is something that's kind of bothered me. There was a key code on the door, a lock, and Braden always used that. He always stuck his keys under the floor mat. That was his habit. And I looked under the floor mat and the keys were there. That just, in my eyes, tells me he locked his vehicle and walked away. I got the phone call around 5.30, 6 o'clock. His tire blew out at the Bordeaux exit south of Wheatland, exit 67. He seemed like a nice, clean-cut man, you know, very nice people person. I asked him where he was going. He said he was headed for the university in Billings. Billings, Montana, is 400 miles directly north of Wheatland. Braden was infatuated with Montana, and Billings would have been where he wanted to go. Slowly, a theory begins to take shape. Braden, running from the law, decides to disappear and start a new life in Montana. Even though we tried to get information uh, distributed as widely as we could, there was just no further leads and no contact. In the coming weeks and then months, there are no more sightings of Braden. Braden's loved ones continue to hope that Braden is alive and living in the great western wilderness he always dreamed of. In our hearts, we believe he's still there. I think he's a little bit more than confused. I think it's more humiliated, very, very upset with himself that he disappointed himself and maybe us.